from 9 million to 30,000 francs. How do I even go about it? How do I even go back to Boyahu without no money? Like, yeah. I was desperate. So I'm like, you know, I'm not going to take this money. I actually had to quarrel with whoever was in that office. We quarrel for like two hours. Uh -huh. I'm sweating. I'm, I'm literally kicking things in the office. And I'm like, this is not going to happen. Hi everyone and you're welcome to this edition of Celeb Style All. So this is different. This is the quarantine edition. So today we are starting up with this edition with Montez. Yes, Montez, the lady DJ play my song. She had her hit in 2016 featuring um, Stanley Eno, banger. She had um, In Love With The Gunman, which won her the African um, Afrima Award. She went on to do collaborations with Mr. Liu. We'll so enough talking let's get to the interview i know that's why you guys clicked on this video so let's get right into it so i'm a huge fan first of all let me start by saying that huge fan my favorite song monte song right now is ale ale motivation oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my favorite that's the song i could dance to forever yeah Hi. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, we are going to proceed with the interview. I know, like a lot of people know you already. Like you're one of the biggest female artists in Cameroon. But just for the audience who don't, who are not very acquainted with some more about you, I will just ask yeah. some questions so they know a little bit about your biography and things. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start with your name, Montez. I know your real name is Yvette Njema, right? right. Yeah, but you, you're you using the name Montez, why? Uh, Montez because a very good friend of mine gave me that name. Mm -hmm. But it happened because during my secondary school, my last name is Monde. So a lot of them didn't get the pronunciation right and I didn't mm -hmm. like the way they were calling me. Yeah. So one day, um, a friend mentioned the name Montez, but I didn't know what it meant. So I came across it on a newspaper. Mm -hmm. And I realized that Montez is actually like an academic, it's like a school. Okay. So I was like, okay, Montes. The school is actually called Montessori. So I'm like, uh -huh, okay, let uh -huh, me just remove uh -huh. the story that's going to represent knowledge. And then one day I just started to Google Montes and see what it actually means. And then it, it said it has to do like, a, it's like a god that's a queen. So I'm like, okay, this kind of fits me. Maybe uh. I should just <laughs> That's right. how I started answering the name Montes mm -hmm. from the body school till now. Okay, awesome. So you, you first went by the name Angel Montes. Right. Then you remove the angel. Why? Why did you yeah, remove the angel? It was just it was just too long. Uh -huh. Like even Montez is too long to spell. And I just imagine adding angel in front. Yeah. And it was still the same friend who used to call me angel. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So um so I did a lot of googling about you. I watched a lot of interviews. So I'll be saying some things which like I learned from those interviews. So um okay. I realized I saw from a blog online that you started doing dancing at six and you are also interested in an acting career yeah i actually did act one time i never ever watched a movie i don't even know how it ended but i liked i really like to dance i think if i if i wasn't like singing i'll probably be acting okay yeah, yeah so I, I know you have plans on going into the acting direction what's holding that back are you are there any roles you're looking at um, I'm looking forward to it. any script that I receive. I actually did receive a couple of scripts last year, but unfortunately I wasn't around because I'm not like stable in one place. Mm -hmm. I was moving. Yeah. So I wasn't around and they couldn't wait for me to come back for us to, you know, sh uh, do the work. So I had to miss that one too, but I'm looking forward to a script, hopefully. Okay. I really want to, I want to do it so bad. I like to act. Oh, I actually have some contacts in the acting world. So who knows? Oh, Am yeah? I thinking of somebody? Yeah, I, I know someone who writes like really incredible scripts, and she's really into the old acting thing. Yeah. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. So um, you mentioned in one interview that your family wasn't very supportive of you getting into the music career. Have things changed right now, or? Yeah, definitely things have changed a lot. You know, normally I, I feel like almost everybody in Africa faces that same problem getting into anything entertainment. African parents have this mentality of you have to go to school, become a teacher, a doctor, you know, those kind of things. So if they see you going into like maybe music, mm -hmm. modeling, they just feel like it's, 
it's an industry for prostitution that kind yeah. of like it's not safe for you you know so obviously if you want to start a career in in a in a, um african home it's going to be difficult mm -hmm. yeah of course it was difficult my mom especially didn't want me to be doing all of those things yeah but you know you always be stubborn and you know dodge away from classes go behind their back and do it anyway mm -hmm. and then when it comes to one point where they say like oh this thing is beginning to pay like money is coming in i are not actually doing the nasty things that they yeah, actually yeah. you're supposed to be doing. they'll be like oh okay yeah because after my um graduation in the university mm -hmm. i actually did music like a full-time job for me because i used to sing in an orchestra mm -hmm. so it was a it was a source of living for me moving from one place to another singing i sang in so many places that you can't even imagine all the governor's houses you can imagine wow. ministers houses um u.s embassy so it was it was a source of living for me mm -hmm. yeah awesome. that was when my mom actually felt like okay let me just let her do what she wants to do yeah yeah Okay, so there's this story you told during uh, Miss Gina, Gina promotes a live video. You told the yeah. story of using your money for, for flight to go to Canada uh -huh. to bring your first video. And when I was listening to that story, like, what, I was very curious, like, how did that whole thing end? Like, what did your father say? Like, <laughs> like I was Honestly, his own. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Honestly, my, fa my father doesn't, he has no idea that's what I did. Okay. Probably if he's hearing it, he should be probably hearing it for the first time in that interview. Mm. But I don't think he's going to react to it now because I've done maybe b bigger and better things have come my way apart from me going to Canada for school. Mm -hmm. I usually go to Canada to visit him now anyway, so he's not going to react to it. But that was one risk that I had to take because at that time, my career was just beginning to, you know, start up and I was seeing positive things happening mm -hmm. and I'm like, Am I just gonna abandon this and go for school? Yeah, it was a very hard decision to make. Trust me, but I had to do it anyway. I just, I just did it, hoping that God is gonna do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't regret doing that because it was because of that sacrifice that I made that made me to win Afrima. Because the song that I actually mm -hmm. used the money to to shoot the video for, it was a song that got nominated for Afrima. Yeah, I won that year, so I was like, okay, it was worth it. Okay, so um, you told the story of how you got the inspiration for In Love with the Gunman, right? I think it was right. you, you were moving on the road with your um, manager and yeah. he saw a, a military woman and was like, are you in love with the government? And that, that was that, right? right. So what right. about um, DJ Play My Song? Like, what was the inspiration behind that? Okay, DJ Play My Song came about... I wasn't even prepared for DJ Play My Song, honestly. When I met Stanley in Douala... And I told him I wanted to work with him. Mm. And his team accepted. I didn't have the song at hand. I didn't even know what I was going to write. So I was like, I started going through all of Stanley's songs to, you know, to see his vibe and how I can do a song that he can easily vibe to. Mm. So I came across this song he did with Nyanda. It's a dance hall song. Mm. And then I love dance hall too. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a song towards this kind of light. Maybe he'll be, he'll like it. You know, and then I was like, what is the problem that we have in the industry right now? I want to target that problem because mm -hmm. working with Stanley is a, it's a, it's like a big platform for me. Probably they're going to hear my voice through mm -hmm. Stanley being on the song. Yeah. So maybe I should just tackle the problem that we're facing right now. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to ask our DJs to play our songs because we want to dance and have fun. We're tired of hearing, you know, Nigerian, yeah. Just, yeah, exactly. Play our songs. Mm -hmm. We want to dance and also feel like we, you know, we're doing it. Yeah. So that's how that song came. That was just the inspiration behind that song. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So um, you have also mentioned that as a female in the career, there are a lot of challenges. People approaching you for the wrong reasons, right? Right. So mm -hmm. have you, and this was an interview you did, I think some two years ago. So do you, have you noticed that as you get bigger in the industry, things get better, you have less of those challenges or does it get bigger? Honestly, it's, it's, it's two ways in what sense. It's more so like, um, as you're getting bigger, just like people always say, um, the richer you become, the bigger your problems are, something like there that, right? more problems, yeah. Exactly. Now, when you're getting bigger, you're meeting bigger people in the industry. You're, you're more exposed than when you're small, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, it means that if those things are coming, they are coming in their numbers as well as, as you're going. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And then, on the other side, it's more like, um, if I'm not like an upcoming, upcoming artist, I'm not really that desperate anymore, you get. Mm -hmm. So, when those things come to me, I easily tackle them because now I, I, I feel like I've navigated the industry in a way that 
I know how to add, who to behave, who to meet, and who not to meet. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. get so it's more like I have my career now in my hands, and I can control it the way I want. So when those things come, I know how to tackle them. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that they don't come. Of course, they do come. They come in even bigger numbers, tempting ones that you're like, oh my god, should I yeah, do this? I should or do should this. <laughs> right yeah okay there's something you also mentioned that you don't um drink you don't smoke and i know that the entertainment world there's a lot of that like there's a lot of this influence that's what everybody's doing that's what all the cool kids are doing so you're tempted to do it <laughs> right. yeah but how do you stay away from all that how do you keep stand your ground um honestly i'm not gonna stay here and say oh it's hard i try mm -hmm. no it's not hard for me because I'm usually normally not a drinking person from way back. I don't drink. So it's not something I fancy. Mm -hmm. Or like say I go in a place and I see bottles and I'm shaking like, oh, I must drink. Like, it's, yeah. I'll probably just pass and you'll be like, ah, this girl doesn't want to drink. No, mm -hmm. I'm not interested because it's not, it's, not, it's not a character of mine to be drinking. Mm -hmm. And I don't smoke as well. But a lot of people think that I do those things, especially when you're doing reggae songs. People think like, oh, you're high ray, you're crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Before people used to ask me, like, what did you have so much energy? Like, I'm sure you smoked before coming. <laughs> yeah. Hello? And you're crazy like this? Yeah. This means if I have to smoke, I'll do <laughs> <wild. laughs> yeah. I, I don't smoke, I don't drink. It's not like I've not tasted it before. Of course, I've tasted drinking, but not smoking. But it's not something that I'll be like, ah, oh, I really want drinks on 3 3 Explore. Mm. Or like, people will be like, let's go to club and buy Hennessy. You know, all those big mm -hmm. names are just names mm -hmm. for me. It doesn't mean a thing. Like, if you think you're coming to give me Hennessy and you're impressing me, uh, I'll just be like, oh, thank you. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm like, yeah, it's nothing. Okay. So, um, I know you had this issue with MTM, right? MTM Cameroon, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, there was all the monetary issues. But my question to you is, how do other artists um, avoid being victims of such situations? Um, first of all, um, before, I, before I actually address how do they avoid, I think that happened to me because I was very ignorant and because I was so young in the industry, I just wanted my song to be out there. I didn't take time to read the contract that they gave me. Mm -hmm. And even, even if I have to go by the contract that they gave me, they still cheated me like millions you get. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's because they knew that, you know, when people know you don't have nobody behind you, they feel like you're doing this alone. They can trample on you any day, any time because nobody's going to come after them. Right. So I think that was what happened. And when I actually went to get my money and these people were taking 30,000 and giving me, I'm like, God, for and you can't even believe what happened. I was going to take that money and I'm hoping that I'm probably coming back to where I want car. Uh, and actually, yeah, I don't shut it down for Mukolo, and I was like, "By some mommy, I made this." <laughs> they gave me thirty thousand, and I had just two thousand francs in my pocket. Okay, so I'm like, "Wow!" From nine million to thirty thousand francs, how do I even go about it? How do I even go back to Boya without no money? Like yeah. I was desperate. So I'm like, you know, I'm not going to take this money. I actually had to quarrel with whoever was in that office. We quarrel for like two hours. Uh -huh. I'm sweating. I'm, I'm literally kicking things in the office. And I'm like, this is not going to happen. But the money couldn't come out because the people who were actually even in charge of that, they were no longer in that office. Another person had taken over mm -hmm. the whole thing. So we tried to follow that money until part of it came, but all did not come. But at least I tried to follow the money. So... The only thing I'll say to people who are going for such contract, especially if you're an upcoming artist, they know you're upcoming. Mm -hmm. They know you're vulnerable. They mm -hmm. can take advantage of you any day, any time. Make sure you read between the lines. And if you're going there, make sure you have somebody to represent you like a lawyer or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. That way they, can, they cannot trample your money. But because I was doing it individually, they're like, oh, okay. And then first of all, she's a girl. You know, people take yeah. advantage of a girl. They know you don't have... You don't have mouth to say they can tr they can do whatever they want mm -hmm. yeah crazy really crazy but i've heard like even saratio he has had that very complaint like empty and taking advantage so i feel like it's something yeah. it's a trend that it, they do it because they yeah they it's can. a trend and it's because they've been doing it and nobody comes out to talk mm -hmm. about it or nobody does anything after that so they keep you know they keep doing it Mm -hmm. But now things are beginning to change with MTM because another company had to step in. I don't know how accurate they are, but from the sales of the other songs, I mean, I received 
good sums of money compared to DJ playing my song. Okay. But till today, I still feel I still feel that anger in me because that was yeah. my very first song, and I, you know, it made a lot of waves, and I cannot even reap the fruit of the song. So it, mm-hmm. I still carry it in my heart. Mm-hmm. And I keep telling you every day, I'm coming back for the other part of that money. Yeah. You guys are giving me part, but I'm coming back. <laughs> the day I'll come. Okay. They should not worry. Don't <laughs> give me the money. I have the contract and everything. Uh-huh. The numbers are there. They're not lying. I took yeah. the number from their website. So they will give me the money. Yeah. So um, when situations like this happen, I know like in other parts of the world, we say mm-hmm. um, there are fans who go on strike, like they stop using a service or things like that. Right. But in Cameroon, like if your fans want to be supportive, if you tell them online, like MCN has done this for, to me, like if yeah. they want to be supportive, what do you think they can do? What role can the fans play to help put forward their case? I only feel like, like you said, they can either boycott using their service, mm-hmm. do like online campaigns and hashtags and make sure that MTN sees whatever thing they're saying and hear their voices. Mm-hmm. And sometimes in Africa, we have laws that even the government themselves don't respect. So yes. it's going to be very difficult to fight those people without the government behind you guys. Mm-hmm. If we had like a music corporation that, you know, actually follows up all of these things about artists, it could easily be heard and something could be done about it. Mm-hmm. But we don't have that. So it's, it's like empty voices just saying something on the internet and nothing, mm-hmm. the truth is nothing is going to be done. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Except that the government has to put laws in place to protect these artists. Then this corporate world are probably going to start respecting artists and mm-hmm. you know because they know that if they don't you know give these artists what they deserve the government is probably going to come for them mm-hmm. yeah right. okay so um you also previously mentioned that um cameroonian music industry is at a 70 percent and i think the reason you gave was that cameroonians don't really consume cameroonian right and i'm right. sure you also saw this um there was this tweet which trended i think it was last week or the week before last, where this Nigerian DJ was talking about uh, Nigerian DJs playing all 99% Nigerian mm-hmm. songs, if Cameroonian needs to go, something of that sort, yeah. So what's your thought? Right. Do you think things have changed? Are DJs playing Cameroonian songs more? Are Cameroonians appreciating Cameroonian songs more? Are things changing? Things are changing gradually, yeah, but it's just that the pace that it's changing, it's not catching up with the rest of the world. Mm. We are actually we are definitely changing, but the pace is so slow. So it's it makes it hard to catch up with the other parts of the world, like Nigeria, Ghana, and the rest. Mm-hmm. It is changing. Like I said, it's at seventy percent. We're not there yet. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that we don't exist. Yeah. And the DJ said something like, um, first of all, I, I will support whatever he said because." Mm-hmm. We are into showbiz, right? And we need to know that there's a business part of it. And if these people, if he said they are playing most of their songs because they want to promote their culture and make money out of it, you don't expect me to leave my business and come and start promoting you that I don't even know you and even people in your own country don't even support mm-hmm. you. It's not, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lose business because of you. So at the end of the day, Nigerians are not the ones to be blamed for our misfortune, but us and the government. Mm-hmm. again and the fans as well who consume foreign music like almost a hundred percent of foreign music and just maybe a lesser percent of our music mm-hmm. but i know it's changing because it wasn't like this like three four years ago yeah yeah it's changing mm-hmm. for real it's just that the change is really the pace at which is going is so small okay so i want to go through a list of some of your collaborations right but before i get to it you mentioned that you and mr leo were classmates right so how was it like were you doing music together were you put in the school choir like what was the vibe like were you always yeah no, we were not even in the school choir leo was one of those guys that i hardly noticed in class like he was so quiet okay like, not even know that he's there we were not even close at all but i just knew that there was one quiet guy like that in class. yeah so i think i remember when i entered university i was going to one studio a famous studio in Boya. Mm-hmm. I saw him sitting outside the studio. And then I said to myself, ah, this boy to the sing eh? In my head, I'm like, what can he even sing? <laughs> I was just wondering. Yeah. Because I knew him from class. Like, he doesn't even talk. Yeah. He's here to sing or what? Like, I was just wondering what he's here to do. Like, mm-hmm. And then, years later, when we meet on the road, we probably just like, yeah, our relationship was like that. Like, this is my classmate. I know her. Mm-hmm. Hi, hi. Yeah. And, yeah. And how did the he whole was collaboration... even the one one time reminding me of the things that I used to do in class, and I'm like, oh, oh you were there. <laughs> <laughs> I want what things I do. I'm just curious. I want things I do. 
dancing. I'm always dancing in class. Yeah. I've always been very active, like okay. in, in terms of entertainment. I've been mm. I've been in the faces of people for a long time. Yeah. From primary school, I'll be on the traditional dance groups and stuff. Secondary school, I was the president of the ballet club, yeah. the competitions and win. You know, so I've always been that kind of a person. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So how did the collaboration tour come about between you and Mr. Leo? Me and Leo, we are we are buddies like that. Like mm-hmm. we, we're very cool with each other. So mm-hmm. I actually just called him and told him, "Yeah, bro, don't you think we should do a song together? I think mm-hmm. it's gonna be nice." So he mm-hmm. said, "Oh, okay, fine." At the time when we wanted to do the song, he was out of Cameroon. He had, I think, he had a tour or something. Mm-hmm. So we ended up not doing it that year mm-hmm. because he was busy. And then by the time he came back. I was out of Cameroon. Okay. So last year when I finally settled down, I called him that, oh, yeah, I'm around. Like, can we meet? And, you know, so he said, oh, okay. So we met in the studio. We talked about the kind of song that we want to work on. And then we started writing everything from scratch. So we both wrote the song together and finished it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Then what about Kosi? For my favorite oh, song. Kosi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kosi is a nice person. I, yeah. I think I remember calling him on Instagram because I didn't have his number. Mm. Because I before before talking to Kosi, I already had the song. Mm-hmm. So I was like, uh, I had the song on Passport too, right? Mm-hmm. And I needed two male artists. So I'm like, okay, Leo would definitely fit in the, the love song, mm-hmm. of course. And Kosi would definitely fit in the work song because he, he's most of his songs is either thanking God and mm-hmm, preaching mm-hmm. about work, encouraging people. So I contacted him, I sent the song to him, I told him, like, just check it out. If you think you like it, we can work on it. And immediately mm-hmm. he called me and said, Oh, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So we, we met in Yaoundé, recorded the, his own side of the, the, the song, and then we arranged for the video shoot. And yeah, mm-hmm. and that's it. Okay, so um, the final one is Stanley, and I know you have told this story a lot, but I just feel like it's amazing, and some people want to hear about this. So, how did that whole collaboration come about? Oh, Stanley, <laughs> Stanley, Stanley is an amazing human being, and I thank God that I had to cross paths with him because mm. I actually met Stanley in Douala. Mm. I went to perform in a movie premiere, and the song I was even performing is the song I told you I used my my yeah my travel money to. <laughs> So you see, that song brought a lot of things yeah. to me. I don't regret doing that. So that, at the time, I had not shot the video of that song. Mm-hmm. So I went to perform in a movie premiere in Duala. But he wasn't performing. So he was, he was you know, in the, in the audience. And then after I performed, he was impressed. So I just, you know, met him and, and you know, took pictures, that kind of a thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I didn't really talk to him that day about working with him. So the next morning, I woke up and I saw a lot of people were tagging me on Facebook and Twitter. And I'm like, what's going on? He was all over Twitter and Facebook talking about me. Like, he met this artist. She's very talented. He was impressed with my performance. Like, mm. he caught his attention big time. So when I just, you know, I was like, oh, okay. I already caught his attention. Mm-hmm. Let me just take this. Advantage, you know, this yeah. Through the bed. So I just, like, slide in his DM. I'm like, I really want to work with you. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, okay, fine. Just do a bit or something and send to me. Let's see how we're going to do I was like, oh, that easy. <laughs> I didn't believe it. Like, yeah. I didn't believe that he was just like, okay, fine, let's do it. So even when I was working on the song, I was skeptical if maybe it's just somebody that answered his DM. Yeah, like a prank. I'm really sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, but I'll just try. Mm-hmm. And then I did. I sent the song. And... At that time, I had not made any announcement about us working. Mm. And then one day, I just saw him. He was the one who even made the announcement that he's working on the song with me. And I'm like, oh, okay, we're in this together. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was amazing. Working with him was, was amazing, especially when we're doing the video mm. in Nimbe. And he was behind the camera and, you know, trying to control me and say, not control, but direct. Yeah, direct yeah. Me, I'm like, you need to put in more energy. And that was like... My first time working with a mega artist, you're kind mm. of nervous, you're skeptical. You want to impress him. You want to make sure because if anything goes wrong, he's probably going to cancel. Yeah. So I was I was shaking and then a lot of things were not even going right on set. The cast we had to use were all not coming. And I'm like, oh my God, why, why, why? Mm. But he didn't care. He cared less. He was encouraging me like, if this cast don't come, we still have to make it work. We're already here. We need to come up with something. Mm-hmm. So... And after that, my relationship with him and everybody in, in Motherland was just smooth and nice. And yeah. Okay. So um, what other collaborations should we be looking forward to? I'm looking forward to uh, working with a female artist, at least mm-hmm. even one, if not all, but even one. Though I mm-hmm. wish to work with almost everybody, but yeah, looking forward to working with maybe Mimi. 
Mm. Yeah, I, I like her vibe. I like her, and she's humble too. So okay. I don't want to complicate that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I like her vibe, and she's humble and nice, and we are cool. Like you know, we talk on a daily, like maybe on WhatsApp or stuff. So I'm looking forward to working on a song with her. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So Apple Cam- I know you've mentioned Apple Camera. I know you mentioned Nigeria. So mm-hmm. can we have like any hints, like which artists? <laughs> In Nigeria, yeah, the, the, are there any uh, artists, yeah, in the books? <laughs> I'm not gonna mention. I'm not gonna mention, but I just know that I'm working on something. Yeah, I can mention the ones that I started. I had to work with them, but yeah, I ended up not doing it because at the time I had a lot of financial constraints. Mm-hmm. I had to work with Ulami Day like in 2018, mm. but I couldn't because the project would demand a lot of money, and mm. if I had to start doing it, I knew I wasn't gonna finish it. Mm-hmm. So I had to end it halfway. I've been to Nigeria a couple of times just to work with those guys, but I didn't know what is what come what come by one finish your work. Yeah, easy. Yeah, I yeah. I remember you told a story of how you you reached and your transport could not get you to where he was, and I was like, exactly. I was I don't even know what I was thinking. I felt yeah. like maybe I was in Cameroon. Where I'll pay transport one hundred Moniko boy at all. I was oh my god! I was just going. I'm like, you know what? Olami is waiting for me. I will go. I'll, Nigeria, I'm going. Yeah. Was like, Why are you going? We don't have money. I said, see, people don't know my faith. Though. Watch and see. I mm-hmm. went to Nigeria. I got stuck to one place. I started calling people from Cameroon to send me money to come back. <laughs> Where am I this? I saw Father. And you just turned back, so you never got to meet him. I never got to meet him because Whoa. me meeting Olami Day meant that I had to to meet my own part of the bargain, what we had yeah. talked on the phone. Yeah. So I'm going without it. Why am I even going? Then after when I was already in Nigeria, I started asking myself, but why was I? Why did I really come here? Uh-huh. I was just hoping something was going to happen. Maybe I'll get there. He might just change his mind not to take the charges or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it didn't, I didn't even get to Olamide's house. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even get to Olamide's house. His team members were so angry and so mad because I've kept them waiting for like yeah. a week and I'm coming. Like, it took me a while to amend that relationship. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'll revisit it. Okay. We are looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. So, um, I get, from listening to all of your stories, I get the vibe you're a very driven person. Like, you're, you're a go-getter. Like, if I want something, like, limitation, oh, yeah. I'm going oh, yeah. for it. Yeah, so what's that drive? Getter, trust me. Where do you get that drive from? Where do you get that drive from? I don't know. I just feel like maybe it's because I didn't grow up with a silver spoon. Mm-hmm. So I'm used to always working for everything I have. Mm-hmm. I'm used to, even from when I was young, like going to school was difficult. Mm-hmm. I had to literally go and sell. My mom used to make, um, what they call, gato. Mm-hmm. Like I get up very early, like 4 a.m. Or sometimes I get up like 3 a.m. We fry gato. I have to get up and bed like maybe five thirty. After I finish frying, like five thirty, we're done. And then I have to go and sell before I come and go to school. Wow! Like so, I'm used to always knowing that I don't have to wait for people to do something for me. I have to do it. Like yeah, and that's how my whole life has been. And I grew mm-hmm. up working hard for everything yeah. I had. And that's why even without being on a record label, I've been able to shoot almost five, six, seven songs. It's not mm-hmm. biscuit, but I do it single-handedly. I'm not waiting for nobody. Yeah. So talking about not being on a record label, why did you decide to go that route? Like, a lot of people, their dream is to be signed on that really big record labels. I know you have your own record label, Queen's Legacy, right? So why right. did you decide to create your own thing instead of going the... I saw the easier route of a record label being behind you. Well, you know, originally, if you start your career, the, the dream of every artist is, I want to be signed, I want mm-hmm. to be signed, I want to be signed. But a lot of them don't know some of the consequences that come with the signing, especially if you are just beginning your career. They take, like I said, they will always take up. They know you're young. Mm-hmm. They know you don't know about the industry. So if, if let, let me give you an example. If, say, um, Renew is an upcoming artist, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say a record label wants to present Rini with uh, a contract mm-hmm. and then they want to present Daphne with a contract. Mm-hmm. The contract they're going to present to Daphne will be almost 100% different from what they'll present to Rini. One, the new Rini is just starting. Two, she's, she, she, she wants to be signed. Yeah. You understand? But what they'll present to Daphne is going to be different because Daphne has been in the industry. She knows what she wants. She knows what's right and what's not right. Mm-hmm. So... At the beginning of my career, I wanted to be signed to, to a label, but it wasn't really coming at a time where I was, you know, boiling to have it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was tired of waiting. Mm. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to wait. 
I'm not used to waiting on anybody. I'm just going to keep doing. Now, when the contracts started coming, I had about four or five different levels. And when, even levels that when they had nothing to do with Cameroon, mm -hmm. I had them. Mm -hmm. But I didn't sign because when I took my time to read the contract, especially after what MTN did to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The power. Yeah. I take my time and read. And when I read most of the contracts, I saw that it was just going to enslave me in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll probably be working for them for the rest of my life without me knowing, like, I'm signing my death sentence here. Mm -hmm. So, I try to, you know, give them my own proposal, what I want. They don't want it that way. They want me to do their own. So, most of them, I turn them down. Most of them. Even now, yeah. as we speak, a lot of them are still coming. Even though under my Queen's Legacy, they still want to sign me out of Queen's Legacy. Yeah. But their papers are not benefiting to me in any way. Okay. I just feel like it's not going to help me because... Literally, everything they want to offer me is what I already have mm. on my own. So mm. I'm like, then why am I signing under you? It doesn't make Yeah, sense. what's the point? Yeah. yeah. But do you think down the line, you might, if you get a good deal, you'll sign to record level? Yeah, if I have a good deal, I'll sign to record level. Mm -hmm. Like you said, good deal. It's yeah. good and favorable for me. Mm -hmm. And I know that I'm not going to entangle myself in something that will bring me trouble tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will definitely. Okay. Okay. So, um... We know about the drama you had with Salatiel, but we we know that during the Bonte um, Award, you guys sorted things out. There were these pictures online. Yeah. So, like, did you did people talk about it behind the scenes before the pictures and the public reconciliation? Yeah. Me and Salatiel before I think that happened in 2016. Yeah. From that 2016 to 2019, Bonte, I've not spoken to Salatiel, not even a word. Mm. I had not met him. So that day at the at the award, I just felt like, you know what? We've gone past it. It's already three years. Let mm -hmm. me just let it go and, you know, let's just dance, dance it out. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. I called him on stage and we danced. And even after that, we didn't talk. We still didn't talk and say nothing. Till today, okay. I still haven't spoken to him. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't spoken. Uh, we haven't met each other. Let me put yeah. it like that. We haven't met each other. But I know for me, we are good. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I think I remember meeting him one time in a football field. He was playing football with Mr. Okay. When I was working on the storm with Mr. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, no, I met Salatia. He came on my set. The Papa set with Mr. Leo. Okay, yeah. Yeah. But oh. we didn't really get to... We greeted, yes. We did greet, but we didn't talk about, like, we're going to do this publicly. Yeah. Like, oh, Montez, you're shooting. Yeah, I'm shooting. Okay. And that was it. Yeah. And after the Bonte thing, I haven't met him. I haven't seen him. Yeah, it's you know, like as I say, get you talking, like it's funny how what you see in front of the camera might not be what's going on behind the scenes because and when okay. we, we heard that you were doing the song with Mr. Leo, Mr. Leo signed on the Alpha Beta, Alpha Beta Salatia CEO, we felt like okay, you guys have probably spoken and hashed out things behind the scene. <laughs> you know, but I that was not the case. At all, we're not yeah. in the we only okay. met on the day of the shooting and i mm -hmm. guess he probably passed by because he probably wanted to talk to mr Liu or something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah but do you think you would ever walk with salatiel down the line yeah why not i will i will walk with salatiel down the line if you had asked me this question two years ago i'll probably tell you never <laughs> like, yeah i saw to myself over like, my you know, dead body <laughs> yes i'll say never yeah but you know like people grow mm -hmm. mentalities change. yeah yeah and Whatever he did to me in 2016, I don't want to see it like, um, before I will see it as hate, mm. but I don't, I choose not to see it as hate anymore. I just choose to see it like that's his opinion. Everybody's mm. not going to be on your side, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I will, if, if God permits, we yeah. will definitely work together. Okay. So I want to proceed to ask you about um, this picture you shared some months ago of your boyfriend. Right. right. Yeah. So um, many celebrities don't. They don't. They keep their private life private. So right. why why do you think that's the case? Why do many celebrities just keep their private lives on the low low? Okay. Even in America, right there, mm -hmm. um, you notice that if you're a female, most of your fans are going to be male. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason why it's always the opposite sex is because opposite sex obviously you know causes some kind of attraction. So most of these boys are your fans because probably they are admiring you. They are crushing on you from a distance. They feel like there's going to be a day. There's a hope. I might meet Montez. She yeah. Might she might even kiss me. We might mm -hmm. even be friends. We might be closer. You know, different mm -hmm. people have those thoughts in their minds. Yeah. So they stick to you because they are hoping. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and they like what they are seeing on mm -hmm. this on their screens right now if you come out and show them this is my boyfriend da they're gonna be like okay bye yeah <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll definitely run away because uh -huh. they're like, okay all hopes have been crushed down that's why even in the western world if you're a female artist you don't just come out and show your boyfriend like that because you're mm. definitely going to lose your fans mm. i've seen people on different posts now recently insulting me that before hey they were my kojo on facebook mm -hmm. like the we are supporting you Montez. yeah yeah but yeah now, they're like the one don't smoke jovi with the one don't like you know and i'm like hey how did boy crush me so like yeah. I it. <laughs> but i realized that it was from when i posted the picture then they're like uh of giving up uh -huh. on the line yeah right? yeah and even for the even for the males it's the same thing most of their fans are going to be females mm -hmm. they're crushing like oh my god look at tizzy's lips oh my mm -hmm. god it's so cute yeah. oh my god maybe one day maybe yeah you know, the moment tizzy comes boom and shows his girlfriend trust me he's gonna lose 50 percent of his female fans yeah the, the ones that are gonna be left are the ones that like you genuinely for your music like yes mm -hmm. those are the ones that will be left those ones are crushing they are gone they are looking mm -hmm. for the next three artists mm -hmm. yeah yeah so why why did you decide to do that then why did you decide to make your relationship public the thing is you know i know that people know that female artists don't post their boyfriends mm -hmm. so to me posting my boyfriend was like a, a twist like if i post him they're not they'll think i'm probably joking yeah okay so, <laughs> so i'm like okay Babe, I'm gonna try this. Let me just post this picture. Let's see what they're gonna do because mm -hmm. I know that they will know that this is not my boyfriend. He's mm -hmm. not up because even my boyfriend will not post him. Uh -huh. I'm like, let's just post it. So when I posted the picture, <laughs> oh, see, you don't want to believe the DMs I got. Really, you disappointed us. Oh uh -huh. my God! Wow, that's your boyfriend. So some were insulting. Look at his pussy eyes. Now they can't bother with like her. Uh -uh. Yeah. So I was like, I knew this was coming. My manager even called me. I was like. Are you crazy? You've gone uh -huh. nuts. Why did you put that picture on Facebook? <laughs> so, but you know, it's not easy to live in the dark. Trust me, mm -hmm. you're hiding like all the time. At one mm -hmm. point, then you get fed up. Like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Now I want us to. Uh, we're almost going towards the end of this interview. But first, I want to ask about this video which has been trending now. You're talking about Stanley Eno Buna Boy. And you're like Stanley Eno is the best in Africa, like a messiah of Africa. And oh, yeah. yeah, and that the Cameroonians don't want to accept it, but that's the truth, right? So right. now my question is, why do you think Cameroonians don't want to accept like Stanley Eno's rank in the whole um, entertainment industry? Cameroonians in general, right? Generally, we we don't like to support ourselves. That's mm. that's that's just us. I don't know why we are like that, but mm -hmm. we are like that. Mm. So, well, that argument came as a result. I was I was in the midst of some Nigerian friends, so we we're talking and they were playing their Nigerian music and stuff, and that's why the song was behind like mm. that. Mm -hmm. And people were just like, "Oh, she's talking about love, preaching love to Stanley, but she's listening to." This. So am I going to stop them from not listening yeah. to the listening? <laughs> so we were arguing and they told me they don't even consider Cameroonian artists as artists in Africa. So it kind of pissed me a little bit. Mm -hmm. So they were over, you know, ranting my ear about mm -hmm. Bonaboy. Bonab so I'm like, who do you guys think is Bonaboy? Stan is bigger than Bona. Yeah. Because I had to look for somebody who's also big that I know that they know because I yeah. know they know Stan in Nigeria. I'm like, Stan is bigger than Bona. You mm -hmm. guys can't tell me anything. So they were like, okay, Tell me what makes you think that Stanley is bigger than Burner? And I told mm. them, Stanley and Burner has been nominated in an award, MTV. MTV is no joke, it's a very mm. big award. And Stanley beat Burner's ass. Yeah. So why is he not bigger than Burner? <laughs> That's how that video came about. Unfortunately, yeah. the video, we didn't post all of the video. Like, yeah. Yeah. But that was the entire conversation. And whatever they choose to, anybody's opinion is their opinion. Me, yeah. I, see, I see Stanley as a messiah. If you don't see mm. him as a messiah, that's your problem. That's your problem. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I see him as the messiah of African music. So I'm yeah. trying to prove to them that you all think he's going to. We have our own Stanley here. Mm. Don't be telling me about ours. He beat your boy nine on ours. Yeah. What are you saying? Okay. And um, talking about Stanley, I've probably been talking about the whole Stanley Jovi saga. Yeah, and mm -hmm. people, like, I think Kosi has come up and he's speaking out like they need to solve things before Jovi goes on retirement. So what is, what's your thought about all of that? Yeah. 
<sighs> Honestly, sometimes when people ask me about Jovi and Stanley Saga, I usually don't like to get in the middle because mm. they have two strong fan base that you can be dragged in the middle and then yeah. you can end your career if you're not careful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, you know, before when I just started singing, it was a dream for me. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but I used to dream that. I used to feel like I can do a song and invite Jovi and invite Stanley mm-hmm, on the mm-hmm. song and then let this enmity just come to an end. Mm. But if they both can actually squash their beef, that would be good. Because mm. it's like our industry, we have just two main beef in the industry. I mean, it's entertaining, yes, but then again, we also have to look at the legacy side of it. Yeah. So if they can squash the beef, that would be good. I don't know who started the beef, who started. This one says he didn't start, this mm-hmm. one says he didn't start. Sometimes I feel like these people don't really have a serious beef. I feel like it's the fans that are fueling it. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. That's that's how I feel. Like it's the fans fueling it. I don't think like individually they're really hating on each other. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. So um this question is from a fan. I actually saw this on Facebook on the Facebook live, but I think he skipped it. I did not answer it and I was really curious to know. So the fan asks, What is the weirdest thing a fan has ever done to you? Uh, I don't know if that guy was a fan or it was just somebody who wanted to one guy <laughs> tapped my butt. Oh, I was going for a show, and you know when you're going for a show, you're concentrating. I have my team around me, and I felt somebody slap my butt. So I turned, and my manager was like, "Let's move, let's move." Mm. But I'm like, "Somebody just slap." He's like, "Let's move. You have mm. to go and perform now." I think that's the weirdest thing somebody. Yeah, has yeah. I, I still don't know who it was who tapped my butt like uh-huh. that. I just heard somebody say Montez, and then the person, I'm like, oh my god, really? <laughs> I was not, these people, these people are not pushing me out. Stand and give you one hot yeah. slap now. That's you know, disrespectful. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know if you can remember, but I met you at Canal De. You came for Feel at Home. So um, I remember on the day when you came, there were all these guys around, and you were having all this attention. And I was like, if I was in Montez's position, I'd be so uncomfortable. I'll be yeah, so uncomfortable. <laughs> Trust me, it gets uncomfortable, but yeah. it's just like you have to put that smile like, oh, yeah. yeah. Because by the time you don't smile back when people are, because that's their own way of showing their love to you, mm. you know. Mm-hmm. It's uncomfortable, but that's that's the only, maybe that's the only opportunity they're going to have to meet you. You, mm. you don't know. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to deprive them of that because honestly, those are the people that make you who you are. Yeah. So no matter how uncomfortable it gets, you have to wear that smile. Like, sometimes I'm like, oh my God, it's so hot. Here. Right. <laughs> And then when you immediately get out of there, you're like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, sometimes it gets really tired. And trust uh-huh. me, like, your face, some of them will come for pictures. You know very well that your makeup is worn out, you're tired, mm. you're sweating, you don't want to be. You're like, okay, you just put on that fake smile. Mm. Yeah. yeah, wow. Those are the sacrifices you have to make as an artist. You have to That's turn crazy. all your uncomfortable situations to make it look like it's nice. You're happy doing it. Yeah, yeah. Could you give us the top five Cameroonian musicians right now? Top five? Mm-hmm. Five. five is too small. Okay. A lot of top. <laughs> five is small, but if I have to pick, um, yeah. excluding myself. Yeah. Because, of course, I love myself. I like the humility. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to say Stanley, Jovi, mm. um, Daphne, Blanche, Bailey. Who else? Stanley, Jovi, Blanche, Daphne, um, Tizi Pancha. Yeah. Okay, Tizi Pancha. Uh, but if I could name like 10, then I'll keep going. I'll add a yeah. way in the list. I'll probably add um, Adele Clarice in the list. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah. So there's this girl, Venutina. Mm-hmm. So what, what's your thought on Venutina? Venny is good. She's she's good. Her voice is very unique. It's mm-hmm. easy to tell that her. She doesn't sound like nobody. She yeah. sounds like her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so she's good. I feel like if she keeps going like that and if she has um, a strong team behind her, she'll go far. Because sometimes it's not about fine voice. So. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. not about uniqueness. It's about the people behind you pushing. Mm. Some people's careers are slow because they don't have the resources and the people. That people have the resources, but they don't have the people. Mm. So even with all the money, they still don't go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So if yeah. she has a good team behind her, she can go really far because she's really unique. Mm. Very unique. Yeah, yeah, very. Like the first time I heard her in Nassau, I was like, wow, wow, this yeah. is incredible. Yeah. One of your videos, you mentioned the diaspora. I think you mentioned that 
you have a better audience in Cameroon than in the diaspora community. Like you're like you don't have a lot of fans over there. So I have things changed now as a diaspora embraced you. Like, is it different? Um, they will definitely. Okay. <laughs> they will. Whether they like it or not, they will. <laughs> they will. You know, home is always going to be home. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. home is always going to be home. Mm -hmm. And plus, I I shuffle between outside and inside. So, mm -hmm. you know, trying to balance up the two and bringing them together. Mm -hmm. But I'm literally based in Cameroon. It's just that I have, I have family over here. Like, mm -hmm. my dad lives over there. So, whenever I go there, I tend to, like, stay a longer time. Like, I mean, I need Harry for coming, but especially if yeah. I'm like, to do, right? But home is always going to be home. And hopefully, the diaspora will balance up. Mm -hmm. I feel like the diaspora they don't already balance their scenes. Now just say diaspora artists home no they accept diaspora artists. That's the problem. Okay. But diaspora they accept home. You understand? So there are yeah. a lot of artists that people in the diaspora know them. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of artists in the diaspora that people back home don't they don't give a shit about them. Yeah. It's supposed to be the case. It's supposed to balance up all of yeah. them are Cameroonians. We're mm -hmm. all one. So they don't have to distinguish diaspora and home. They, mm. they make people in the diaspora feel like because you're out there, you're not part of us anymore. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's not that's not even right at all. Yeah. Because honestly speaking, the people from outside are the ones giving the incomes to those who are singing. When they go out that's there and so sing, true. they're the ones bringing the mula. Mm -hmm. So when you start secluding them like that and they mm. choose to also follow that trend, I say, okay. We yeah, also, we won't care about you, Paul. Guys. Then... Everybody in Cameroon always oh, over swath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Okay, so um, before you go, what message do you have for upcoming artists who look at you, your role model? What message do you have for them? Those who look at me in particular, I want to say you have to be brave. Mm -hmm. You have to be strong. You need to be a go getter. Cause me, I work my ass for everything I have. So don't just look at me on Instagram and say, oh, I want to be like Montez, and you think it's just gonna happen it will mm. not gonna happen or you're also waiting for your own stanley and not to come and do a song for yeah you. yeah yeah you gotta go get it stanley mm. didn't just sit in his home and call me and say oh come here let's do a song no mm -hmm, i was mm -hmm. i worked for it i performed for it i used my flight money for that <laughs> right oh my god so you have to be very strong you have to be focused Especially the females. Don't just come in the industry with the mindset of I have a banging body and I'm mm. gonna you know just make my way up there. Trust me, there are people who have banger bodies than you, people mm. who are sexy as fuck, but they haven't made it. Mm. You get because when you come in with that mindset, you're just gonna useless yourself. Trust me, when they when you sleep with you one, two, three times, they're not gonna look your way anymore. Yeah. They're looking for the next person. Yeah. So come in with that mindset of I'm going to get it. I'm coming with my talent. Mm. I'm coming to go and get it. Even if I don't have money, mm. I'll push. Beg if it's necessary. Beg. I did beg. A lot of us beg. Daphne mm. beg. Blanche beg. Somehow they must have begged in their career. Like, oh, please mm. help me. Don't come with your shoulders high. Yeah. You know, with, your, with your lashes all long and you're thinking that you're sleek. No, mm. you know, sleek past Beyonce. You know, mm. sleek. What if you wear lashes? You understand? Yeah. Don't come in with that mindset. Yes, your body is going to be a plus to it if you're good, you're sexy, because in the internet you need to add that to spice it up. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be the basis of your career. Yeah. So if okay. you want to be Montez, you want to be dark, you want to be Blanche, <laughs> you got to work, baby. Yeah. Work, baby. <laughs> I like I like that advice. Like it goes in line with the song Ale Ale. Like that's why I like that song. Exactly. Like if I feel down, that's my go-to song. Like that is oh. it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um um do you have any upcoming projects? Something we should be looking forward to? Yes. I'm working on my album. Mm -hmm. Almost done with it. We're recording a couple of songs, but before the release of the album, I'm gonna release one more single mm. first before the album. Yeah. So. Mm. Okay. Awesome. So, what can I, I heard you said something that like you'll be doing gospel in this album? You'll be doing a gospel song? Yes, I'm going to put a gospel song in it. Okay. Why Why did you... you know, yeah. Because I just want to remind the fans out there that the father is a sinner. Doesn't mean that you don't you, you don't you don't remember who created you in this yeah. world. You have to be reminded every day of who who brought you here because without him you will not be showing your lashes. You know, be wearing mm -hmm. those sexy clothes you're wearing. Mm. So yeah, the song is just like a like a reminder. Like don't forget where you're coming from or who mm. created you. Right? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So I'm really looking forward to that. Like hopefully yep. the gospel song will become my new favorite. I don't know. I like those kind of motivational songs. <laughs> 
<laughs> that might become my new favorite, yeah. yeah. So um, I have one favor to ask from you, like, this is a dream. Could you do an acapella of Ale Ale? Okay. Don't look at me. Close your eyes. Okay. <laughs> Allez, allez, no travail la va payer. Allez, allez, never give up on your dreams. Hey. Si tu es bien, si qui n'est allé, hey. et nettoyé, allé, hey. et ménagé, allé, bye en selle, allé. Hey. <laughs> yes, never give up on your dreams, guys. Keep pushing. Yeah, never give up on your dream. My dream was to hear you do this a cappella and you did it, so like, I didn't uh-huh. give up, you know? <laughs> That's a good dream. Yeah. Very short. That, that kind of dream that you know that that dream will happen. Yeah. That, yes. <laughs> that one is not dream. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Montez, for this interview. Hey guys, this is your girl, Queen Montez. I know I'm your favorite. You might have other favorite, but it's okay. But before you say anything, make sure you subscribe to Chakara TV. Click on the notification below and follow everything. Don't forget to share your videos because they are doing an amazing job. If you're a fan of Montez and you love me, please do subscribe and share Chakara TV. Thank you. Thank you very much, Montez. It has been so nice talking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was yeah. such a, an interactive interview. Thanks a lot. I yeah. appreciate you guys. Everything you guys are doing, I really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you, dear. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay, guys, so that was it. That was the interview with Montez. I hope the questions we asked were questions which provide a value. But if there are some questions which we left out and we didn't ask, uh, make sure you leave it in the comments below. You never know, we might have another opportunity to have a sit down with Montez and um, ask her more questions. Yeah. So thank you very much for watching. Bye. See you guys next time.